Container managers are vitally important if you are managing Docker. Unless you want to do everything via the command line, not that there's anything wrong with that, your container manager will be the interface you spend a lot of time in configuring deployments. There are many to choose from, but today I'll be showing you Docmon, a new container manager which is so fully featured, I'm on the verge of switching. This video was voted on over the weekend in the Service at Home Discord. I'm your host, Evan. Let's get started. Starting in TrueNAS, we are going to jump over to the datasets tab on the left. And in my tank configs dataset, I'm going to create a dataset for all the data for Docmon to live in. In the top right, I'm going to click Add Dataset. I'm going to call this Docmon and click Save. When the warning comes up, I'm going to click Return to Pool List. On the very bottom right, I'm going to edit the permissions for this data set. I want to change my group to apps. And then I want to make sure the group has all permissions by making sure the checkboxes are checked on the group line. I don't want other to have any permissions, so I'm going to uncheck these checkboxes. I'm then going to check the Apply Group checkbox and click Save. We are going to be deploying Docmon through Dockage. If you don't know what Dockage is, there's a link to our video in the description below. On my apps tab on the left, I'm going to click the Dockage app that I've installed and then click the web UI button to enter Dockage. To start a new stack, I'm going to click the plus compose button in the top left and I'm going to give my stack a name. On the right, I'm going to remove all the placeholder information. Then I'm going to navigate to the wiki. And in the search bar, I'm going to type in Docmon. Click the results. Section one, deploy Docmon. I want to click the copy button in the top right, and I want to jump back to my Dockage web interface and paste the code. Some things you might want to look at before you deploy this. For the ports section, I selected port 8001. If port 8001 is not open for you, you can change this external port to anything you want. For the volume section, I put the dataset in mount tank configs Docmon. If you put yours anywhere else or if your pool is not named tank, make sure to make that adjustment here on the first line. Ignore line three, that's so it can manage Docker containers. Once that's set, go ahead and hit deploy. Once you see your container is healthy, click the 8001 pill to open up the web UI. You should see an error that says 400 bad requests. Docmon is running on HTTPS by default with a self-signed cert. You're gonna to wanna to go into your URL and change the HTTP to HTTPS and hit enter. When you get the next warning, click the advanced button, click accept the risk to continue and enter our username and password. Our username is admin and our password is docmon123. As soon as I log in, it's gonna prompt me to change my password. Go ahead and give it a new password. Starting on the dashboard, we get a nice overview of what's going on in the system, but we can make this even better. In the top right, click the expanded box to make the local host box even bigger and jump to your settings. Go ahead and tick off all of the tickers and click back to the dashboard again. Now we have a really nice overview of what's going on in the host, as well as what's going on within some of our containers. On the host tab, we have the option of adding additional hosts. When I click the add host button, I can create a registration token. And this gives me a Docker run command that I could run on my other host, or I can run it as a system service on bare metal. Make a note that whatever system I run this on as a secondary host, I need to be sure it's able to reach the Docmon server by being on the same network, maybe using a VPN, something like Tailscale or NPM. Looking at the containers, if I click a container like N8N, for example, it'll open up this modal that shows me all sorts of information about the N8N container. I can see logs, events, alerts, updates, and a health check. In the deployments tab, I can create new Docker stacks by clicking the plus new deployment button in the top right. I can give my deployment a name, set the deployment type to Docker Compose stack, and set the host. From here, I can just paste a regular Docker Compose YAML file, enter some environment variables, and click create deployment. I also have the ability to save this as a template, which is really convenient in the event I want to launch a lot of similar Docker containers when I go to set a new deployment, I can click from template here and search existing templates to automatically fill out a lot of this information. One of the best strengths of this container is the ability to import existing stacks. This is the reason that the mount tank stacks line existed in the Docker Compose YAML file we set up for Docmon. Using the import stack button on the top right, I can click browse host, select my local Docker, and then click the big blue button to scan for compose files. You'll notice it found 54 compose stacks. 
Even though it's found 54, there's actually 61 on the host. I'm not sure why it's not finding all 61, but I've already submitted an issue on the GitHub page for Docmon. When I click select all, I can import all the selected. Another bug is even though I've selected 54 containers, or in this case, compose files, it only successfully imported 52. Again, I don't know why I've already submitted a ticket on GitHub for this. Once they are imported, however, we can do some really cool things with them. Take Hunter, for example. In this case, I can edit the Hunter Docker Compose here. It'll show me what it's named, where it is, the Docker Compose YAML for it, as well as any environment variables. Another small bug, in the event you have environment variables saved in your stacks folder for a certain Docker Compose, it's not correctly pulling them into the UI. I've already submitted a ticket for this. I can click Save Changes to modify the Compose stack if I want. Thank you all for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to get the latest updates on home labbing as well as all things self-hosted. If you want to have a longer conversation with us, jump on our Discord server. You can find an invite link in the video description below. As always, stay curious.